The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Kelvin Hepner with Real Agriculture. We're at Crops Sphere 2018 here in Saskatoon and uh, pleased to be joined by Carl Potts, Executive Director with the Saskatchewan Pulse Growers. And Carl, of course, lots of uncertainty right now in the, the pulse market when it comes to uh, demand and the whole India tariff situation on peas and lentils and growers right now trying to decide how many acres should I be planting this year? What's the market going to look like? What's the latest in terms of what we know about India's tariffs on Canadian exports and some of the, the story or the, the reasons behind what they're doing, trying to do. Yeah, well, as we all know, in the late 2017, India imposed a 50% import duty on, on peas and a 30% import duty on lentils and chickpeas. Uh, India is our largest market for, for pulse crops with about 40% of our total uh, exports going to India. So we're hugely reliant on India. Really, the, the latest is, is that those import duties remain in place uh, and I think are likely to remain in place for, uh, you know, for, for a period of time as India chews through some uh, existing domestic supplies and I think is trying to increase the domestic uh, price of pulses in, in their own home market. Okay. So in terms of communicating with your membership, what is happening right now between the Canadian government and Indian government, or or is there are there things happening kind of behind the scenes, even though we're not seeing any changes or or quick resolution to this right now? Yeah, I think the Canadian government has been very active on on this file right from the outset and even leading up to the imp imposition of, of import duties. Um, you know, they've been very engaged both on a, a trade mission in, in November and continue to be very engaged on on this file. So we've been very pleased with the Canadian government's um, you know action and, and work on on this particular topic. Uh, the reality of the situation is that the import duties you know are uh, are still in, in place, and uh, but we're hopeful that uh, over time we can have these import duties uh, removed uh, just as quickly as possible. They are WTO compliant? Uh, yeah, uh, India does have the ability to uh, impose import duties up to 50% on peas and 30% on lentils and chickpeas. So it does appear that they're compliant uh, you know, f from that side of things on the import duties. With regards to fumigation requirements, is is one area though that we feel that uh, you know that we need to have a stronger basis in science and try to um, you know find a way that India you know can move away from these non-science based uh, fumigation requirements that, in the absence of import duties, would continue to limit trade. Okay, so does Canada have a, a carrot or a, a stick? an argument or what is that argument that Canada is trying to make to India to uh, to have them change this policy so that our pulses can continue going into the Indian market as they have in the past? Well India is very focused on on food security. They talk about in trying to increase domestic production to reduce their reliance on imports and be more food secure. Our argument from Canadian perspective and Canadian pulse industries perspective is that trade is a very important part to helping India and other countries achieve food security. We recognize that they want to increase their own domestic production but we have to recognize that uh, imports can play an important role when when production is lower or when farmers choose to to produce other crops so our argument um, really has been to try to increase food security through trade with stable you know politically and econ economically stable strong trading partners like Canada and others that are out there mm -hmm. And I guess that's the thing, India's had a couple bumper crops in a row. What happens if they don't have a, a bumper crop and, and prices skyrocket domestically? That's kind of, I guess, a, a scenario that could play out. Yeah, and, and that's exactly the situation we had you know, two years, years ago with a success of uh, weak monsoon rains. Uh, Indian uh, production was lower, their domestic uh, uh, consumption continues to increase because of in rising incomes, uh, demand for plant-based protein there, um, and and I Indian pulse prices of staple food products were very high uh, for pulses. Uh, prices to consumers were at, uh, at at near record highs, and the Indian government was taking a lot of effort to try to, to reduce those prices. So we think um, you know the uh, you know, imposing things like import duties and other fumigation requirements to try to block trade just really uh, amplifies. The, the peaks and valleys, and if we're trying to work towards more f food security, stable and predictable trade is very important. Do you or, or Pulse Canada h hear anything from the, the processors in India in terms of them being on your side or pressuring their government to give them access to, to uh, export or imported 
pulses? I, I think it, it depends on exactly the nature of the business and exactly the nature of the you know the current position that they they hold with with respect to stocks. Uh, you know, I think a lot of long-term uh, uh, customers in India want to continue to have access to Canadian pulses. Canadian pulses are some of the most cost-effective forms of plant-based protein uh, that they can supply in the Indian market. So they very much have a place there and have been very successful. So uh, you know, the Indian. Uh, um, uh, trade can be, you know, an ally, I think, in the right conditions. Okay. Moving closer to home then, and a much more, uh, I think, certain demand story, we've seen this investment over the last year or two in processing of pulses here in, in Western Canada. How, in the context of overall pulse demand, how significant is this potential for processing that's been announced or that is already under construction or, or even operating in some cases? Yeah, so if, if you look at the, the plants that have been announced over the last year or so, Roquette in Manitoba, WA Grain in Alberta, Veridin Foods in uh, here uh, near Saskatoon as well as some others, if you take all of those uh, announcements together, once they're fully on stream, would represent something like 600,000 tons of new incremental demand and processing here uh, in Western Canada. So that's very exciting. Keep Keeping in mind, uh, you know, you have India, you have China that's coming in uh, somewhere around 800,000 tons of annual demand. You know, Bangladesh would be our third largest market. 600,000 tons of new demand would put the Canadian domestic processing industry at our number three market overall. So that we think is very significant. And uh, as we talked about at our annual general meeting, demand diversification has been and, and continues to be in the current Indian market situation, a very important part of our risk management and market growth strategy uh, going forward. So um, even with just those uh, those that have been announced, we think that there's more that's, uh, that's likely to come. And, uh, and it's really an exciting time from that perspective for demand for plant-based protein and the ingredients from pulses. Okay. So can all of this domestic demand, this focus on, on plant-based protein, new, pro new food products, can this offset demand such as India or does that need to include China and some of the other major developing markets around the world? Yeah, it's going to include all of it. You know, we're focused on North America, we're focused on uh, Europe, but we think China has an impo important growth opportunity to play. We recognize that China is already our second largest market for pulses overall, but it's new uh, areas of demand that we're focusing on on building in China. So we have a very strong demand for fractionation for protein, starch, and fiber uh, in China. But we're really looking to try to grow uh, pulse flower utilization. You find that uh, that pulses combined with uh, strong, high-quality Canadian wheat work very well in some some applications, and that's an area that we're trying to advance uh, even more. In November, when we're in China uh, on a on a trade mission, uh, working on some some projects there, we saw continued growth in the uh, in the uh, vermicelli uh, fractionation side of things, but also uh, lots of interest on the uh, on the flower inclusion. Okay. Finally, then, Carl, uh, for your members, a uh, farmer calls your office and says, what's the latest on India? I want to know whether I should up my pea acres, decrease my pea acres, my lentil acres, chickpea acres. What advice do you give to your members, to your growers in terms of what they should anticipate in the, the pulse market for 2018 here within, with the India situation still up in the air? Yeah, I, I think people have to pencil in uh, import duties in the current situation as affecting planting decisions going forward. I would love to be uh, be corrected and, and have those import duties come off prior to seeding decisions being made. But I think the reality of the situation in India is that they're, they're likely to be there. So I think farmers need to be realistic. I think we, we have to recognize that the uh, strong growth in demand and in prices that we've seen in particular in lentils over the last number of years has been driven by increased demand in India. So we're seeing that you know, on the downswing. Again, you know, in the long, medium and long term, we still remain very positive on India as, uh, as a need to import and the demand there. Um, but you know, over the next year or so, we're expecting to see a, a decline uh, in both lentil and, and pea area. I think it's a little bit early to know what that will be. I've seen some market estimates that come out saying lentil uh, you know, acres might be down 25% or so, and peas something lower than that. Um, and that, uh, you know, that's probably in, in the right range, but a lot can happen before, uh, before seeding time. All right. Well, we'll st stay tuned definitely for hopefully a positive update sometime soon, Carl. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.